הלו? שלום, ברודר, שלום. שלום, שלום. So you used to be a Muslim and you became a Christian. Yes, yes. All right. So uh, uh, your name is Amir, correct? Yes, sir. All right, my friend. Go ahead and tell the people about what happened to you. Man, it's a man. It's a very, it's a long story, but it happened ever since I was a kid. Um, I seen him when I was 12 years old. To make a, a long story short, and I denied him all my life, and I always put it behind me. But I always remember, I always hear his voice in my heart every time when I used to pray and everything, every time. And I always used to push him behind me. Yeah. And then I got, and then in uh, February 1st of 2020, I died. I died and what, I- What, what I, do you mean by saying you died? I had a heart, I like, I had a, I like, these people, they think I was dreaming. Like I, I always tell somebody, I know what dreams are. This is not a dream. I like really, I like, he killed me for real. Like I really died. He wanted okay. to show me what I was doing. I was going to hell, and my soul, my soul knew everything right away. Your soul feels everything a million times more. You feel everything. You know everything, and it's it's unbearable. It's it, I was falling in a black pit, falling fast. Now right away, that's the first thing I did was scream the shahada, and I screamed Allahu Akbar like eight times, and that's what trips me out. These guys say that I seen the devil. Well, the devil wasn't scared of Allah's name. I said it eight times. I screamed Jesus one time, and I, I, I came back to life. He gave me another chance. You know what I mean? Let me um, do that. I was falling, and I screamed, I screamed the shahada, and I, and then when I screamed Allahu Akbar eight times, and then my soul told me that I'm it's a, it's a lie. They they lied to you. It's not true. And I'm going to hell for eternity. And right when I felt the separation, the hopelessness is unbearable. Uh, like every time I tell it, I want to cry. I, the the um the feeling of hopelessness is unbelievable compared to, from from the hopelessness you feel on earth is nothing compared to what you're gonna feel when you know that you don't have God no more. And I, like th there was this white fly a white light flying around me so fast, and I knew it was my guardian angel. And this guardian angel's voice was the most scariest and the most beautiful voice in one. That's the only way I can explain to everybody. This voice is so piercing. I will never forget this angel's voice in my life. It's so piercing. I It won't leave me. Every single day I think about this voice. And it started screaming at me. And it was telling me, Amir. It was going from one ear to the other. Amir, please, you have to listen to me. And this angel was so desperate for me. It was so desperate. It said, please, you have to listen. He can still hear you. He's the only one that can save you. You have to tell him before your soul leaves your body. You have to tell Jesus to save you before your soul leaves your body. Hurry, do it now. Hurry, hurry. And it was and then when I was looking down and I was, it was another pit. And right before I hit that pit, and I, I was like, well, while I was falling, I couldn't even, I still couldn't believe it. You know what I'm saying? I was still couldn't believe it. And I screamed out, Jesus, please come into my heart and save me. And I, my, the, the pain, like the, the force that my, my soul, when it came back into my body is unbelievable. Like the force, like my chest was hurting me for like four days. It's like, I know what a defibrillator, like when somebody has a heart attack and they use that shocking machine, that's what it felt like. I, I like when, when, when I said his name, a big flash and a big boom, uh, like a huge blast. And that's what I heard. And then I came back to life and I couldn't believe it. I was sweating like crazy. My wife was going to call 911 and I knew I had a heart attack or something. I knew, I knew something happened to me. And even at that time, even even that moment, I said, there's no way this can happen. There's no way. There's no way. So I took another eight months. I read the Quran and I took my time. Okay, because I was proud to be Muslim and I was I was scared, you know, in Islam, we leave our religion. It's a wrap. There's no forgiveness. That's the only for that's the only sin Allah can never forgive you if you leave your religion. And I was thinking about the 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 embarrassment and the torment that I'm gonna cause for my whole family. Even my, my I still my wife is still Muslim and my kids are still Muslim. They, they and you know I'm I'm trying hard to get them to believe, but once you're programmed in that system. It's so hard because Islam is all fear. Islam is all fear. It instills fear in a person to where you don't you want to just stay in it. You know, even even keep even, listen. This is what this is what trips me out. Even if Jesus came down, they're still gonna deny him. That's what drives me crazy about people. And they act like they know me. They act like they've seen everything. They don't know nothing. And after after I got saved, Christian Prince. 
I, if I tell you the things that he shows me and the things that he, I, I can't believe it, it's like I write everything down. I have a journal. I write everything down, all the things that he shows me and tells me. It, because even even recently, like at sometimes, you know, when I go against my family, they come and they want to debate me and all this stuff. And, you know, sometimes, you know, my, my mind gets, gives me doubts. But when I hear his voice and I feel his love, his love is un believable that's what people don't understand even even if i tried to go back to islam he will not let me he tells me i'm safe where i'm at that's how much he loves me i'm 45 years old and i i never felt this love and protection in my life and i all and now i know all the times that i that all the all the accidents that i've been because i almost died so many times and now i knew why he kept me alive. He didn't never want me to go to hell. And that's where I was going. Is your wife now still Muslim? She's halfway, halfway in, halfway out, because I show her, because I watch her channels like crazy, and I document everything, and I and I show her things, and I show her how and she can't believe, like, she's against everything. So, you know, if you're against the Prophet, that you're not even Muslim, you can't say you're a Muslim, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, she doesn't agree with a lot of things. Once you disagree with anything Muhammad did, you, you can't consider yourself a Muslim. Exactly. And she, I, she, and she's, she, she is already out, even if she is saying she's not yeah, yet. Yeah. yeah. And me, I can't be fake. Right away, I, I didn't waste no time. He didn't let me. I told my whole family, and I, I told everybody, and I tried to explain to people. I go, listen, man, I never wanted to hurt anybody. I never wanted to destroy my family's life. But... I'm not going to go to hell for anybody. I will never have that feeling of hopelessness that I felt when I died. There is no way. And there's no way that out of every every prophet and everything, Jesus is always the one that shows up, not in just with me and everybody. Anybody that died and comes back, they always say it was Jesus. Nobody else. Yeah. Nobody else. Everything has to do with but, Jesus. Uh, but Amir, you know, listen. Now you will not receive the versions. You know what? That was uh, <laughs> <laughs> not only the virgins, the orgies. The I mean, orgies. I, I mean, isn't isn't it obvious that this God is a scam? You know, I mean, what kind of God? He promised me endless private part. Women, her ass will be one mile. Do you like one mile ass? See, this is the thing that, that that opened my eyes like so much. Like, okay, how how is it haram to have sex on earth, but it's not haram to have sex in heaven? How God is so holy. There is no desire. We don't take our evil desires on earth to heaven with us. I don't know what kind of fantasy these people live in. There is no sex in heaven. Okay, we have a spirit body. Our body is not going to be like with penises and vaginas, and we're going to have sex and kids. It's not going to be like that. These, that's what trips me out. They really think. That they're gonna have all kinds of porn stars going on, and <laughs> you know uh, the promises they are so stupid. I mean, if a person have a, little, I mean, a small brain, you don't need to be genius. When there is uh, somebody he says to you that your wife, her ass will be one mile. I mean, <laughs> what is that exactly? You know, one mile. <laughs> you know, yeah. I advise you actually to open your YouTube channel. So you can, you know, you can help the Muslim himself. As you know, we don't hate Muslims. And you yourself, not long ago, you used to be a Muslim yourself, right? So we don't hate the Muslims. And I believe that you have a duty yourself to help the Muslim to see the truth and to leave Islam. And that will help many to leave Islam and to listen to you and to come to Christ. And that will be a blessing for you uh, now and in the future. Amen, my brother. All right, my friend. Thank you very much for calling. You. I love you, Christian friends. I right. appreciate everything you do for our Lord. I appreciate you. God bless you. Thank God you. God bless everybody. Take care. Man.